What's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. The new Shield TVs have been released and I got both of them here to take a look at. Now in this video, I'm just going to do a quick unboxing. We're going to do a comparison between the two new models. I'll also go over the interface and we'll run some benchmarks. I'm going to be comparing this to the old 2017 Shield and we'll see how these stack up. I do have a lot of videos coming up on both of these units. I want to run a lot of emulators on these, so definitely subscribe to the channel if you're interested in checking that out. But for this video, I figured I'd do a comparison because we have two brand new models on the market, and there are some key differences between these two devices, mainly price, storage, RAM, and I.O., but they both contain the new Tegra X1 Plus processor, and that's what I'm really interested in with both of these devices. So first up, we have the new Shield TV Pro. 3 gigs of RAM, 16 gigabytes of internal storage, and that new Tegra X1 processor. Plus, we get the new remote, which is something I've been looking really forward to. It's got a very odd shape here. It does have replaceable batteries, but one of the main key features that I really love about this is lost remote detection. I'm not sure exactly how it works, but I will get into that. And the main buttons are also backlit. The price on the Pro version here is $199 and it does not contain any kind of gaming remote, but you can connect your Xbox One, PlayStation 4, or pretty much any Bluetooth Android controller to this box. If you're familiar with the Shield TVs, you might notice that this is the same exact design as the 2017 model, but these are much smaller than the older 2015. We also get our user manual, startup guide, and our power brick, which I believe is going to be rated at 19 volts by 2.1 amps and these do have a proprietary connector on them. So there's really nothing new with the design of the new Shield TV Pro, same as the 2017, but don't get me wrong, these are really small when you compare them to the old 2015 version. Next up, we have the $150 Shield TV. This is the non-pro variant. We still get that Tegra X1 Plus processor, but it only has two gigs of RAM and eight gigabytes of internal storage. As you can see here, it does come with that new remote, and I'm really loving this thing. But the device itself is tubular shaped, which is really odd for an Android TV or an Android box of any kind. On one end, we have our full-size HDMI output and a micro SD card slot, plus a little power slash reset button. And on the other end, we have gigabit ethernet and power input. Now this has the power supply built into the tube itself, so you're just going to be plugging directly into the wall. I'm not really sure how I feel about this design, but I do love the fact that they put a micro SD card slot here. Unfortunately, there are no extra USB inputs on this one here. So this one is coming in at $50 cheaper than the new Shield TV Pro, but they did cut a lot of corners, like no USB ports and only two gigs of RAM instead of three. I was really hoping they added three here. I could get by with eight gigs of internal storage in that micro SD card slot, but I'm not sure how I really feel about two gigs of RAM in this device. So obviously there are some major differences between these devices and I'm going to go over those right now. So the new Pro version comes in at $199. We have the Tegra X1 Plus processor, 3 gigs of RAM, 16 gigabytes of internal storage, 802.11ac Wi-Fi, Bluetooth 5.0, gigabit Ethernet, full-size HDMI 2.0b, and two USB 3.0 ports. The lower end version retails for $150. We still get that Tegra X1 Plus processor, 2 gigs of RAM, 8 gigabytes of internal storage, 802.11ac Wi-Fi, Bluetooth 5.0, and gigabit Ethernet. It's also sporting that full-size HDMI 2.0b, but we don't have any USBs, only a micro SD card slot for storage expansion. So right out of the gate here, I would definitely suggest spending the extra $50 to get that extra gig of RAM, 8 gigs of storage, and those USB 3.0 ports. But if you're just looking for a really nice streaming device, and that's pretty much all you're going to be doing, let's say streaming Netflix, Hulu, HBO, and playing some native Android games, the lower end version will definitely get the job done. But if you're looking for a nice emulation device, I would definitely opt in for the Pro version, mainly because we have those extra USB 3.0 ports. I personally use a 4TB USB 3.0 hard drive and I just can't connect it to the smaller version. Setup on either one of these devices is a breeze. You can use your phone, you can type in your email from here, or you could do it online if you want to from a PC. So I need to go ahead and get everything installed on both of these devices. I'm going to be running some benchmarks on both of the new ones and the 2017 version. All right, so here we are with the Shield Pro. I've installed a bunch of my favorite apps and I will have a ton of emulation videos coming up very soon, but I did want to get into the benchmarks and just talk about the feel of the new Shield Pro. 
It does feel a lot faster than the 2015 or the 2017 version. And I've basically used the 2017 version every single day. It's my main media device downstairs and I also have one in the bedroom. So I'm used to the navigation on that thing. And this does feel a bit faster. Let's go into Google Play here. Supposedly they revamped the store. It kind of looks the same to me. I'm not sure if that's going to be in a later update or not. Lots of games to choose from. Unfortunately, there's really not a lot of great games here for Android. But luckily, when you buy one of these shields, you do have NVIDIA games. This is NVIDIA GeForce Now, NVIDIA games. You can stream from your own PC, or you can play games here directly on the shield streaming from their servers. There's a lot of free stuff, like Fortnite, Tomb Raider, Batman. But if you purchase other games, you can play them here. And one of the cool things is this does support Uplay, Steam, and a few others. So if you own, let's say, Rad on Steam, you can play it right here, streaming it from their servers. Same thing with anything. As long as it's listed here and you own the game on that certain platform, you can stream it. So this is for Steam. This is for Uplay. This is GeForce Now, strictly for GeForce Now. So you'd have to buy it through them. But there's a lot of stuff in here. Left 4 Dead 2. It's Steam. I own this. I could stream it. I just got to set up my account here. Really awesome little feature, and this is free if you buy an NVIDIA Shield. Like I mentioned, this does support USB drives or USB hard drives. I'm going to go into my File Explorer, USB. I have some 4K videos here, and this is my go-to test, Big Buck Bunny, 60 FPS, MP4. It'll play it perfectly on here, 4K, 60. It's just a great media playback device, either streaming or running from a native drive. They do claim that this new chip is 25% faster than the old Tegra X1, and I've run some benchmarks just to see if that holds true. First up, we have Geekbench. This is strictly a CPU performance test. Single core on the 2017 Shield TV was 1332. The new 2019 tube version was coming in a little lower than the pro version, but not by much. And if I kept running this over and over again, we could match those scores because we do have that same CPU. But we did get a 1404 on the tube version and on the new pro version, 1470. So on single core for Geekbench, we're right at about 9.8% better than the original Shield TV. Moving over to the multi-core score, we're seeing about a 15% gain with these new Shield TVs over the original. Next up, we have 3D Mark Slingshot Extreme. This is a very GPU intensive test. On the 2017 version, we scored a 3,764. On the new Pro version, 4,456, which is about a 16% increase in performance. GFX Bench, this is OpenGL 3.0. Not much of a difference here, only about a 2% increase in performance. And finally, GFX Bench T-Rex on screen. This is OpenGL ES 2.0, about a 3% gain. I was personally expecting to see much higher scores here in each one of these benchmarks, but unfortunately, the highest percentage we got out of this over the original 2017 was a 16% increase in GPU performance using 3D Mark Slingshot Extreme. So taking a look through the settings here, Shield Accessories, my Shield Remote that came with the new Pro version, Backlight settings, we can change it all the way up to 5. Duration of the backlight on the remote itself, I'm going to set this to 3 seconds. But like I mentioned, my favorite feature is find this remote. Now in order to get here, you will have to connect a controller or let's say a mouse and keyboard to get to this section. But when we need to find the remote, it'll give us a beep. And that's a big plus for me. I got three kids and my remotes go missing all the time. Another cool feature that the older NVIDIA Shields don't have is AI enhanced upscaling mode. Now this is absolutely amazing. It works with apps like Hulu, Netflix, and YouTube. I've set mine to AI enhanced, have it on high, and we have demo mode going. I'm going to head over to YouTube just to give you an idea. This is a YouTube video that was uploaded 11 years ago. It's set at 720p. I'm going to start it up. And as you can see, AI enhanced, non-AI enhanced. And we can do a side-by-side -side comparison here. It is absolutely amazing. 
I don't know how well this is coming across in the video, but it's mind blowing that they can do this. Turn it off, turn it on. It's just crazy. So far, I'm really loving the new Shield TV Pro and the new Shield TV. They're actually really nice devices for what you're getting here, especially with that new remote and the AI upscaling. This feature here alone may be worth getting at least the cheaper version. This is absolutely amazing. If you like to watch older videos that just don't come across like they used to, this is an awesome option. I can't believe they were able to pull this off and it really does make the image look so much better. So like I mentioned, I do have a lot of videos coming up on emulation using both of these devices. We're going to kind of compare the performance in the Dolphin emulator running some GameCube games, PSP, and Dreamcast. I got a good feeling that they're going to perform pretty much exactly the same given that they have the same chip. These emulators really don't use that much RAM. The original systems never use that much RAM anyway. So the 2 gigabyte model might be on par with the Pro version. It's just a matter of having those extra USB ports and that extra internal storage. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I really appreciate you watching. Should you upgrade from the 2017 version? Um, personally, I really don't think it's going to be worth the upgrade unless you're really into that AI upscaling and the new remote. But if you're interested in picking one of these up, I will leave links in the description to Amazon. You can also check your local Best Buy. I know they have some in stock where I am. Definitely subscribe to the channel because I got a lot more coming on this thing. But like always, thanks for watching.